It's been a while since I've just done a simple roundup of a lot of different Switch accessories, so let's take a look at some of the newest ones you can grab in 2021. First off is this Panda controller from Stoga. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, that's because I did review a previous controller released by this company, which was the Tom Nook styled controller. Now, my review of that controller was mostly pretty positive. It was a very small controller that was uncomfortable for most people, but if you happen to have smaller hands or if you were buying it for a kid, I thought it was a fantastic controller. And the goal of this Panda controller is to basically be the larger size, bigger brother of that controller that's more comfortable for people with larger hands. And I gotta say, Say, I actually don't like it quite as much. In terms of the size and shape, yes, it is definitely an improvement. It feels good in the hand grip. I'm able to hold it and use it for a long period of time. And there are a couple other light changes to the physical design of it that I really do appreciate. For instance, the front ears on the Nook controller had this very kind of nice curve to them that felt good on your finger, but the problem was it also made it feel like you would want to hit the button by pushing forward. The angle on this button is much more pronounced, and so you don't really feel that tendency, which I do appreciate. On the other hand, there's just a couple other aspects of this controller that feel not quite as good as the smaller one, to be honest. The D-pad is very mushy, not the worst that I've used, but not particularly great. All the front-facing buttons are just a little too sticky. They're not horrible. I've definitely used ones that stick worse, but you will notice in any kind of situation where you have to rapidly press a lot that it just sticks maybe a little longer than you'd be comfortable with. And while stick tension on these is pretty good, there is a noticeable amount of friction on the ring where if you're spinning it around a lot, you really feel it grating, which can be kind of annoying. All that being said, overall, it is still a perfectly functional controller. I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just not quite as good as I think the Nook controller was. And for its price point, there are some similar controllers that are a better value. With that in mind, I don't think this is necessarily a wrong way to go. If you really like the aesthetic of this controller, including the little paws on the side, the fact that it's got the little panda interface, and the fact that it has a button as a nose, which is the turbo button, which is so ridiculously cute of an idea. That alone I think actually makes this kind of worth it for some people. I think this is a perfectly fine pickup. If your main goal is to get the best value kind of pro level style controller, this isn't it. If you want a cute controller that gets the job done, congrats, this is for you. Next up is probably one of the weirder looking items on this list, the Hyperpodium from Hyperkin. Now, I was a little hesitant to cover this one because I feel like it's a slightly late answer to a need that a lot of people have already addressed, which is GameCube controller support on the Switch. There are, of course, official options that have been made available in the past, though not necessarily in great quantity. There are lots of other third-party options out there to pick one up, but this is one of the newer ones that does stand out as being a slightly more interesting one for obvious reasons. Uh, instead of just being a simple attachment that plugs into the USB port or trying to be its own standalone dock, it is a attachment to your dock that takes over the USB-C port on the bottom and plugs into the back of the dock as well. And then you place the switch on top where it's now gonna be peeking out, but allows you to then access these four GameCube ports on the front. And in fact, I can actually take it out so you can see what it looks like on its own which is just this little piece right here. Now, when it comes to reviewing something like this, I think the main takeaway here is pretty obvious. Does it work or not? And it does. You're able to plug in your GameCube controllers. They all worked perfectly fine. I wasn't noticing any kind of weird button mix-ups or any kind of major input delay. The only thing, as far as my personal experience with it goes, that was kind of annoying is the initial setup. Getting this to sit just right inside of the dock and then placing the switch on top of it doesn't feel as smooth of an experience as I would hope for it to be. And on top of that, the ports in here are very tough to get a controller in. You definitely have to apply a little extra force to make sure you can plug the controller in, and it takes a little bit extra force to also pull the controller out. So you wanna almost make sure you have your hand on the dock to stabilize it instead of just pulling the whole thing. Also, because this does kind of enter the realm of, is this a dock? No, it's a pass-through that works with the USB-C, so if you're worried about any kind of problems where the Switch might encounter issues being docked into it, not a thing you should be worried about. I tested it myself just to be sure. I took my Switch out and put it back in repeatedly. Never once had any problems. This is not acting as a full dock on its own. It's just passing through and being based on the Nintendo Switch dock itself. So it is a safe option. 
If you've been waiting on a new way to get GameCube controllers on your Switch, or you just finally started getting back into Smash thanks to all the recent DLC characters, this is a handy option for you to get that full four controller support all in one place. One of the big things this year is, of course, is the 35th anniversary of the Zelda franchise, which we're hoping to see some more news from Nintendo celebrating that, but for the time being, the main stuff we really know about are some special Joy-Clones that are on their way, and of course, the re-release of Zelda Skyward Sword. But the Joy-Clones are obviously being very difficult to get a hold of, not to mention just buying new Joy-Clones is already expensive in the first place, and a really cool alternative that I found recently are these shells designed for the regular size Nintendo Switch. This is not like a proper shell exchange like that. I mean, you can even see the red of the Joy-Con underneath it. It just snaps on over it. I've seen previous designs like this idea in the past, but this is by far one of the best looking ones I've seen. It comes for both Joy-Cons along with having the little uh, stick head top right here and a design for the back of the Switch, which looks amazing. Now, I will say I did have some hesitation when I first attached this to my Switch because one of the things that really stood out to me as possibly being a problem is that the thickness of the plastic is just enough that it makes the buttons a lot more flush with the body. So I was really worried that was gonna mess with my ability to press them properly, especially if it was ever kind of like a high stress moment in a game. And that didn't end up actually being an issue. Uh, there's still just upraised enough and there's a nice little spacing around it to where pressing the ABXY or the directional buttons on the left Joy-Con is not a problem at all. Really the only buttons that to me I had any problem pressing with this skin attached is the plus and minus buttons, which thankfully in most games aren't actually used for gameplay. It might be used for something like pulling up camera controllers or something, but for the most part, it's just going to a pause menu. So it can be a little annoying to press these, but of all the buttons to have that issue with, I'm very glad it's those and not necessarily, you know, the ABXY or the shoulder buttons, which all feel fine. Obviously the upcoming Zelda Joy-Cons are beautiful and something that a lot of people are gonna try and get their hands on, but if you're not able to grab one or you just don't wanna throw down that much money for them, this is actually a really nice alternative that not only covers the Joy-Cons, but also the main body of the Switch and is a little more focused on that Breath of the Wild style energy rather than the sword and shield aesthetic that the official Joy-Cons are going to have. Now our next set of items is a slightly different situation than the rest because it's not really me reviewing a new thing, but rather taking a look back at something that we saw quite a long time ago with this wireless controller from Hori and this wired controller from Power A. And the reason I wanna take a look at these is that while the controllers themselves have been out for a while, ever since their initial release, there's been all kinds of new colors and designs coming out over time, like this Tom Nook one from Power A or this Mario Red one from Hori. And I gotta say, I really love the art direction that a lot of these companies have been going with. And because it's been so long since I've actually, you know, retested these controllers, I wanted to pick up these newer ones just to see how they stack up to my memory. And a lot about how I feel about these two in particular is actually somewhat similar to what I had to say about that Panda controller. Overall, everything about really both these controllers is decent. Decent buttons, decent sticks, decent D-pads. None of it is absolutely flat out bad. It's just that not all of it necessarily is a shining example of the best stuff out there. Though one thing I will point out about both of them that I think is a problem I see with a lot of third-party controllers, especially the ones that are aiming at being more affordable, they're very, very light. I've always appreciated having a little bit of heft in a controller, especially because I think, you know, a lot of mainline ones have so much stuff packed in, especially with the rumble packs that, you know, it has a little bit of weight to it. And all of these third party ones don't, they feel very hollow. And while it doesn't necessarily mean that they're made cheaply, it certainly gives you that feeling sometimes. But going back to that same kind of idea of what we had with that Panda controller, right, is really both of these controller styles and a lot of the different controllers that come from a lot of these major third-party companies are solid, fine controllers. There are absolutely better options out there if you really want to try and rank your choices and see which one has the absolute best buttons, best D-pad, all that kind of good stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're just looking for something that is functional and you like the look and style of, these ones still work out great. So there are a bunch of new Switch accessories to keep your eyes open for. I'll have everything linked down below in the description if you guys want to take a further look at any of them, in particular for the kind of more popular third-party controller options out there, like from Hori, Power A, or even PDP. I'll link a couple additional options down there that we didn't necessarily directly showcase, so you can see some of the newer designs that are out there that look really nice.